Wonder Woman is a big deal these days, but there are some aspects of her history that DC is definitely not in a hurry to acknowledge. Whether outdated or just a little too weird for the mainstream, these elements sometimes get swept under the proverbial rug. Her Creator's Unusual Beliefs Wonder Woman's co-creator with artist Harry G. Peter was William Moulton Marston, a psychologist who was also responsible for the principles behind the lie detector. His wife, Elizabeth Holloway Marston, is said to be responsible for giving him the idea of a female superhero. And that superhero, Wonder Woman, was visually inspired in part by their girlfriend and third spouse, Olive Byrne, right down to the metal cuff bracelets she liked to wear. And all her friends and helpers are sorority girls who have spanking parties and everybody fights Nazis and rides in an invisible plane. Yes. At the time, the trio would be considered radical feminists, believing that women not only deserve freedom to pursue their own lives and pleasures, but were better suited to run the world. They attended meetings at the home of Carolyn Keatley, who led what some might call a feminist sex cult. In time, Marston fathered children with both Holloway and Byrne, and when he died in the 1950s, the two mothers continued to live together and raise those children as a family. Marston's interest in bondage and loving submission had a funny way of making it into the comics he wrote. Couple that with his unique living arrangement, and you can see why DC isn't exactly promoting that little factoid. That doesn't mean it's a secret, though. The comics are well known for seeming pretty kinky in retrospect. And the 2017 film Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman attempted to tell the whole story. Secret Identity Theft Most people know that Wonder Woman's secret identity, when she bothers to have one, is Diana Prince. Since her real identity is Princess Diana, you might assume she got her American alias just by flipping that around. But in Sensation Comics No. 1, she went about it a little differently. Arriving at a military hospital, Diana comes upon a weeping nurse who happens to look just like her. It turns out the nurse is actually named Diana Prince, and she's crying because her fiancé has found work in South America and she has no money to join him. Wonder Woman has just earned a pile of cash by demonstrating her Amazon abilities on stage. So the real Diana Prince sells Princess Diana her credentials and leaves the country. Since Wonder Woman was trained in nursing on Paradise Island, this deception isn't a problem for her patients. However, she's also an undocumented immigrant who got a job with the military using somebody else's paperwork. Which, yeah, um, let's just move on, shall we? The Justice Society's Secretary the Justice Society of America was the first superhero team in comics and the predecessor to the Justice League. Unsurprisingly, for 1940, the team was entirely male to start with. Although the original Red Tornado, a middle-aged housewife who became a gender-ambiguous comedy hero, made an appearance at their first meeting in All-Star Comics No. 3. Nine issues later, they welcomed their newest ally, Wonder Woman, as their secretary. World War II was in full swing and the society had just been commissioned by President Roosevelt to become an official part of the war effort. So it made sense that they might need someone to take minutes at their meetings. It makes no sense, however, that the job would go to a trained warrior who's arguably more powerful than anyone on the team. Fortunately, the secretary aspect of her membership was quickly dropped. That Egg Supervillain During the Cold War, evil communists were not uncommon as bad guys. But none of them were quite like Egg Fu, a gigantic egg. Yes, a literal egg, with a face straight out of the Drawing Asian Faces for Maximum Outrage handbook, and an accent devoid of prepositions. Lacking limbs, he attacked people with his mustache, and even managed to kill both Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor in his first appearance. Fortunately, Queen Hippolyta brought them back to life with Amazon technology. It's nice to know that's an option when things go badly. As for Egg Fu, he went the Humpty Dumpty route, but has been brought back again and again over the years. Recent creators have made an effort to make the character not so over-the-top in 60s stereotypes, but we're not sure he's worth the effort. At the very least, we can be confident he won't be in a Wonder Woman movie anytime soon. The Embarrassing TV Pilot in 1967 With the popularity of Batman in the 1960s, producer William Dozier started looking for other DC superheroes to bring to television, and Wonder Woman seemed like an obvious choice. With writer Stanley Ralph Ross and director Leslie H. Martinson, both of whom worked on Batman, he created a five-minute Wonder Woman pilot starring Ellie Wood Walker in the title role. Diana Prince is portrayed as a mousy klutz living with her mother, who is definitely not the queen of the Amazons, and much of the pilot consists of Walker posing in front of a mirror wishing she was more beautiful. And who thinks she has the beauty of Aphrodite. The whole thing feels sexist and unappealing, and Wonder Woman fans should give thanks that only five minutes of it were ever made. The Embarrassing TV Pilot in 2011 
After another failed pilot starring Kathy Lee Crosby failed to catch on in 1974, the third effort to bring Wonder Woman to television with star Linda Carter was finally successful the following year. But the pilot for a fourth attempt in 2011 never even made it to the airwaves. It's nowhere near as bad as the 1967 version, but it's certainly not good either. This Wonder Woman was produced and written by David E. Kelly of Ally McBeal fame, with Adrian Palicki in the title role and Elizabeth Hurley as the villainous Veronica Kale. In this incarnation, Wonder Woman publicly goes by the name Diana Themyscira and runs a corporation to support her costume crime fighting, but also has a secret identity as Diana Prince, which she uses to avoid the public eye. Palicki has a pretty good look for Wonder Woman and acts the role as best she can, but the costume isn't great and its metal parts are unmistakably plastic. Palicki did later get to prove herself as a superhero, though, playing Bobby Morse, aka Mockingbird, on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Her sister Nubia in 1973, superhero comics were making an effort to introduce more black characters. But with most of the books written and drawn by white men, it didn't always go so well. In Wonder Woman number 204, Princess Diana meets another warrior who claims the title of Wonder Woman, a black woman named Nubia who rules a floating island. To Diana's surprise, Hippolyta reveals that Nubia is her sister, explaining that she actually sculpted two baby girls out of different colored clay, and the dark-skinned child was stolen by the war god Mars to be used against the Amazons. Diana frees Nubia from the influence of Mars, and they become friends as well as sisters. However, someone at DC apparently decided this wasn't a great idea, and Nubia quickly disappeared from the book. That's kind of a shame. Wonder Woman having a black woman as her sister, or at least a close ally, has plenty of potential. However, the name Nubia is, well, yeah, and the whole light clay, dark clay aspect is kind of crazy when you think about it. Not the best way to explain race. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.